It depends uh, whether you think it's a good or bad thing that uh, the Saudi league are starting to buy uh, so many players. Uh, I think what you need to do is look at what's happening from a global perspective and not just from a Western European uh, perspective, because it's not written in stone that the Premier League always has to be the richest, most successful league in the world. And a lot of countries, especially outside uh, England, look at the Premier League and are not particularly happy with the way it seems to dominate world football. Because, say, if you're a country from Asia, for instance, uh, or, or Africa or South America, what's happening is that you are losing uh, your best players to the big leagues in Western Europe. At the same time, your population, instead of watching your own league and going and supporting your own local sides... What they're doing is buying Manchester United shirts or buying Manchester City shirts or Barcelona or Real Madrid and watching their games uh, on TV. So I think what the Saudis are trying to do is uh, they have realised there's a massive interest in football in their country. They were the best supported side at the World Cup in Qatar. And they've looked at it and said, look, we want this interest and this money to stay in our own country and to benefit our own economy. Also, of course, there are other reasons uh, they're doing this. Uh, we all know uh, about sports washing. Uh, we know about the fact that uh, Saudi Arabia's human rights record is one of the worst in the world. Uh, but there are sporting reasons for doing this as well. They believe they've got a very young population uh, that are interested in football. They want to get them active. And it's not just a case that they've put money into the big clubs in Saudi Arabia uh, to buy big name players from around the world. They are investing a lot of money, for instance, in women's football, uh, in youth football, in training coaches, in uh, improving facilities as well. So it's not just about buying Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim Benzema and Jordan Henderson. There is a, a bigger plan. When you see these players, though, moving to Saudi Arabia, people will make the comparison with China that the investment soared and then very quickly bombed. Is Saudi Arabia in it for the long haul? I think it's difficult to say. Uh, it looks at the moment as if they are in it for the long haul. That is what they're saying. I think what they want to do is build on the success of the World Cup in Qatar. Uh, a lot of people who went to Qatar enjoyed that World Cup. There was a different atmosphere inside the stadiums, uh, different kind of supporters, uh, a lot more families going to games, for instance. And the Saudis have seen how successful that was uh, and thought, well, look, let's try and improve our own league and tap into uh, what the Qataris tapped into uh, as well. And as I said, the Saudis have got a phenomenal amount of money. They're one of the richest countries in the world. And they seem to be very, very serious about this. They've got a strategy. Uh, it's called Vision 2030. They have a very, very young population. I think 70% of their population are under 35. There were big, big concerns about the fact that their population wasn't active enough. Uh, so they want to get people active, get people doing more sport, get people watching sport and going to sports events inside their own country rather than just watching it uh, on TV. So is that... The end game then, to push it, to get more people involved in sport, what is the end game for continuing to throw so much money at it? Well, I think from a sporting perspective, uh, what they want to do is build on the success of their national team, for instance. They're the only side that beat Argentina in the World Cup in Qatar. Uh, I think something like 10 years ago, they were ranked something like 126 in the world. They're now ranked 49th in the world. They want to be a top 20 side uh, by 2034. They also, as I said, want to get a lot more people active and involved and playing uh, football. And also, of course, they've got this dream of hosting the World Cup. Uh, they saw what Qatar did last year. They want to host the World Cup as well. There's talk of a bid maybe in 2030, a joint bid uh, with Greece and Egypt. I'm not sure that is going to come off because at the moment the overwhelming favourites uh, for that is a joint bid uh, from Spain and Portugal. But ultimately, I think they want to host a World Cup as well. But there is the political aspect to it as well. It's undeniable that by investing in football, you can buy influence, you can boost the prestige of your country. 
and you can project soft power as well. So that is happening as well.